Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Joel, and this is A Stable Life. As you guys can tell, we've got a pretty hard frost last night. Temperature got as low as 18 degrees Fahrenheit last night. For the day today, it's looking like we're looking at around 30 degrees Fahrenheit, so below freezing all day. But as you can see, a lot of the horses have a strong enough winter coat that they're completely fine. The cold doesn't bother them at all, especially considering that there's no wind movement. There's no precipitation, and it is beautiful clear open skies. So that's perfect weather for us. Some of the horses that have a little bit more of a wimpy tendency, and by that I mean they have a thinner winter coat, not as strong. They do have a sheet on. We could try training them, but the problem with training a horse is that they lose a lot of weight doing that. And with a lot of these horses not being ours, but rather cl our clients' horses that we have to take very good care of, it's more keeping the horse healthy and happy. Unless the client has a specific request to train the horse's coat, then we will do so. All right, they're all coming up to come on in, but you guys know we only start things off with Poncho. Today's pretty exciting, guys, because as far as I'm concerned, I believe we're getting another shipment of large square bales today. All right, Poncho, here you go, bud. Looks like all the ground's nice and frozen today. All righty, good morning, boys. Come on in. Roni, good to see ya. George, good to see ya. Jack, good to see ya. Champ, always good to see ya, my man. William, no straps hanging. That's what we want to see. And then we got Rebel and Casino. Good deal. And they all came right in. With all the horses in, it's time to feed Tucker and the donkeys. That's Tucker. <laughs> you have a response, Buster? No response, sadly. Looks like Gavin won in the drawdown. There you go. There you go. For anyone curious about the purpose of Buster and Rocky, for all our new viewers, they are essentially our mascots. A lot of the clients like to come down and just see the donkeys. It's a good stress relief. Time to let in the big field. Look how fuzzy Obi looks. Come on, Obi. Come on, Skywalker. Come on in, boys. And look at the rest of these beauties. Come on, boys. There you go. Good morning, weather. Good to see you, buddy. Morning, Samson. Good to see you, Danny. Docs and Argento. I like it. I like it. Okay, Argento. A little mean. Good morning, Duke. Good to see you. Good morning, Declan. Good to see you. And good morning, Suede. Good to see you. And we got a couple other horses that are chilling on the ridge over there. We got Spitfire, Gavin, and Tucker. And then all the way down there, we've got one eaten out of the round bell feeder. <laughs> all right. After some yelling, they're on their way up here. While they're coming up, I just thought I would actually talk about something that's been going on lately. You'll notice that with it being as cold as it is, the water is thawed. That's on purpose. We have our water heater running. Uh, but I thought I would just let you guys know we're running into a bit of an issue with some stray voltage making its way from the electrical receptacle that is grounded into the tank. And when the horses would drink the water, they would get a little bit of a shock, which we definitely don't need. You see, horses on average drink upwards of eight gallons of water per day. And in the winter, that's extremely important because they're eating hay and hay is very dry. So naturally they need a lot of water to wash all that hay through their digestive system. So they need to drink. And this water trough is important because this is the main water trough that they get water out of for our big field, which is why we let them out slowly when we're turning them out and when we're turning them in, if they wanna come over and get a drink, we never chase them away. We always make sure that they're all getting a drink. The nice thing about this 150 gallon tank is we can actually monitor how much water the horses are drinking. So we know how well they're doing at drinking water or how badly they're doing at drinking water, which is never the case. They're smart animals. They know when they need water and they drink it. And sometimes they'll drink all eight gallons at once when they're here. The way that we fixed that was, I don't know if you can see right here, there's this black wire running down. We put a grounding rod right next to the water tank all the way in and then ran a grounding cable up to the plug where the outlet actually is. It is properly grounded at the box. However, we were still getting trace amounts of about a volt of electricity in the water, which we couldn't feel when we put our hands in, but the horses could feel when they drank. Putting that wire in and that grounding rod seemed to fix the issue. So now we have that grounding rod put in for the other two water troughs that are in the left and right runs so that we don't have those issues with the horses getting that electric shock. Meanwhile, Spitfire and Tucker are now here, or we're just waiting for Gavin and Sriracha. So I just wanted to tell you guys that because if you're having that issue, that was how we fixed it. We did a lot of research and it seems like this is a bit of a common problem with tank de-icers. So if you're having that problem where you have a tank de-icer plugged in and you're noticing that your animals are getting a little bit of a shock, but you need the heater running because otherwise the water will freeze, that was how we fixed it. Tucker, are you a little confused? You know where you need to go, bud. Come on. Let Gavin escort you out. By the way, hello, Gavin. Hello. 
and we always make sure that this water trough is chock full. So we can see this is about halfway. I'm gonna let all the horses out and they'll drink that down and I'm gonna fill this up after they're done so that it's full for the day. And then tonight we'll check it again. We check our water troughs twice a day in the winter because it's important to make sure they're getting the needed water. Hey Gavin, good to see you my man. Hey Sriracha, good to see you. Alrighty, good news guys, that's all of them. Now let's go check our hay feeders out and see how things are looking, because we need to make some decisions. You'll notice that our large square bales have not been touched, and that's on purpose. These are stored under roof, they're beautiful, and they're dry. So we're planning on actually leaving these in here until we need them in the spring. So for now, they're staying there. And as you guys can tell, we don't have the equipment to put more in and the roof to put more in. So as far as we're considered, this is full. We're back out here where we put all of our round bales and you guys will notice that it's completely empty. All those round bales that were here, we have used. And Gavin is getting on the four wheeler and he's gonna head out and check our round bale feeders to see what hay we need to put out. My assumption is that we're gonna need to put out a full stock today, which is two in the big feeder one in the small feeder, and then one in the middle field, making a grand total of four bales that we need to put out. So I could put out the large square bales right now. However, as I mentioned, we have large square bales coming in, and being that these are dry and under roof, we kind of want to keep them dry. So where are we going to store these large square bales? Joel, that looks like a good spot. Yeah, I think you're right, Gavin, but then how would we get the round bales? We'll just use the large square bales off the wagon until the wagon's empty. You know, I think that's a pretty good idea, Gavin. I think that's what we'll do. And I know you're thinking, but Joel, this wagon's outside. Aren't the, aren't the bales gonna get wet? Well, you're exactly right. We're gonna tarp them. They're already dry. We're going through about 20 to 25 bales a month. So the 20 that we have coming in will basically push our round bales a month out, which is exactly what we need. So we'll use those large square bales once they get here to put out for hay. All the horses are looking really good. I didn't see any horses shivering, but we'll take a closer look at them later on. For now, we need to make sure that they've got enough food because that's important, especially with the weather getting colder. And we have snow coming tomorrow, which I'm pretty excited about. And it's not snow into rain, it's just snow. So that's awesome. So I started up the tractor. As you can see over there, she's warming up. Tucker's over here getting a drink. <laughs> when we put him in the stall, we left the gate open. So naturally when he finished eating his food, he just, you know, hey, I'm thirsty. I'm gonna come get a drink of water. This is the field he's supposed to go into. He's just a little early. So we're gonna let him finish getting his drink of water and then I'll just go ahead and walk him back over to his pasture and we'll close the gate this time. That way we don't have any issues. <laughs> yeah, come on, Tucker. Let's go back to your pasture. So you guys may have noticed, you're like, hey, Joel, it seems like all you ever do anymore is just move hay. Yeah, that's pretty much all I do in the winter is move hay. That's a big job with horses, especially when you've got 23 horses at your stable. You've got a Percheron, you got a Belgian, you've got another Percheron. They go through a lot of hay. That's a big job. And I used to just have to do this with small square bales. Whew. I do not miss those days. I was just talking to them about how we used to have to get so many small square bales per month. You ever miss that? All the time. Really? Yeah. Joel gave me the camera to film him putting the hay out, but just between us, I really don't miss doing the hay at all. I'm so glad we're not doing it every week. Hey, we got it in the feeder, and as you guys can see, it it's the whole feeder. <laughs> That's something else, isn't it? that large square bale in here there's a little bit left from the round bale and my mom got me a pitchfork because she was watching the videos and noticed I was doing this by hand so firstly mom thank you I appreciate it looks like I'm getting a call from the boss we're ready to put in some large square bales check it out guys this is a slice of hay from a large square bale that's pretty crazy, isn't it? Let's see the hay quality in here. Look at that. Look at that, that's beautiful. This is good, really good hay, really good hay. Now that we have hay all taken care of, it's time to let out our horses. I just got news that the hay farmer is on his way here. So we'll need to get these horses out so they can, get, they can all get their drinks. <laughs> 
and get started eating hay. And we'll prep for the hay farmer when he gets here so that way we can unload him promptly. This is from a different hay farmer. This is not from the same, same hay farm. And these are different sized large square bales. The last ones were three foot by four foot by seven foot. These are three foot by three foot by seven foot. So we are getting them at a cheaper rate. All of our horses are now turned out. You can see they are running down to go get out of those hay feeders. The so donkeys have access to both the left and right runs. So we're gonna go ahead and close things up and set things up for when the hay farmer gets here. And as you guys just saw, we've got all the large square bales unloaded and ready for me to stack them away. Where am I putting them? Well, we mentioned a little bit about the wagon and we'll, we'll stuff them wherever we can. We'll be feeding these right away. Mostly all of this hay will be what gets us through December and into January. But now Gavin and I are gonna go get some lunch. You hungry? Yes. What do you want? Food. Well, let's go get some food. We are back from eating lunch. Taking a look at our large square bale, you can tell these are four foot wide. The new ones that we just got in are three foot wide. My tractor can handle them a lot better. So I'm thinking I might be able to stack three. The skid steer wasn't able to stack because the skid steer's hydraulics, when it picked up, was about to hit that top plate. But my tractor, everything's on the front. So if my tractor is able to pick it up high enough, we could fit three in here, which would be great. Look like they're about 600 pounds, so my tractor should be able to handle these actually pretty, pretty easily. So that's good. Hopefully, we'll be able to get three in the barn, and then we'll see how much we can fit in the tractor shed where the quads park. one all the way at the top up there. Good deal. So now there is an even 20 large square bales in here. So that's awesome. We've only got 17 more and we're gonna try to fit them out there. You think we can make it happen, Gavin? Easily. Easily. Hey, Joel, what are you doing? What's that? What are you doing? Oh, it's not important. Are you sure, Joel? Because it looks like something happened. Nope, nothing happened. Nothing to see here.
Well guys, we finally did it. We got all the hay under roof. We ended up not having to put any on the wagon and tarp them, which is fantastic because I didn't really want to have to do that. So technically speaking, we could get another 20 and tarp them on the wagon, but we're not going to do that. We believe all of the hay that we're going to need, which is fantastic. Unless something happens and we end up getting like 10 more horses and we need more hay, which that's not happening. So I don't need to worry about that. But we have 17 large square bales fit in here. As you can see here, we got it stacked to the brim. I don't know if <laughs> you guys like that. That's some ingenuity right there. And we got a little walkway back here so we can get to all of our stuff that's back here. So good deal, good deal. So there's three that we put inside where we had our large square bales inside the mow and then 17 that we put out here. Now the four wheeler does not do good out in the weather at all. This needed to be put under roof, especially considering we have snow coming. I could just, you know, put two there and then one there and then one there as far as bales go but uh, I staggered this one over and then put these two underneath so that we'd actually have a little cubby to put the four wheeler. So we've got a place to put this actually under roof. Now, sadly, yes, the tractor will not fit in here. The tractor lost its home. I know, very sad. However, she does a great job being outside. We don't like to put, keep the equipment outside because that is harder on the equipment, but I know my tractor will start. It's a New Holland. She runs great. That engine is solid. I don't really need to worry about that thing too much. It being outside for a week is not a problem. Either way, this hay will be used first before we use the round bales. My tractor will get its home back soon. For now and for the snowstorm that's coming, everything needs a place to, to be out of the weather. Hay and quad are more important because the tractor's hardy and I don't need to worry about it not starting. Gavin is getting started feeding horses in the afternoon. We just about got all the major things we needed wrapped up for today, which is fantastic. Alrighty guys, do you know what time it is? It's donkey time. Yeah. You guys all set for the night, huh? Yeah, you guys all set for the night? Looking good. And just in case you guys were wondering how the boots fared for today, I absolutely love them. Like I mentioned before, I'm not paid for this. Or they just sent over two pairs of boots, one for me and my wife to try out. They didn't even ask me to make a video about it. If you guys are interested in checking out the company, I will put a link down in the description below where you can check them out. And you guys can just watch along and see how they fare for me. And if you end up liking them and wanna check out a pair for yourself, you're more than welcome to. All the horses are turned out. Everything is set and ready for the snow coming tomorrow. As you can see, everything's tucked away. I don't think we're keeping them in for the snowstorm either because there's no rain following it. Looks like it's gonna be just snow and the horses don't mind just the snow at all. In fact, they love it. Gavin had to leave. He ran out of time being here, but he was an immense help today and he was responsible for a lot of the really awesome footage that we captured today. As always, I mean, what's new, right? But it's gonna be on that awesome note that that's where we're drawing an end to the video for today. But before you leave, I just wanted to give a special thank you to each and every one of you that watches the video, that hits that like button, that puts a comment down below. I may not be able to respond to every comment, but I do my best to read through each and every single one of them, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. As for the question of the day, I know you guys have been missing it. For today, it's going to be all about hay. So if you run an operation where you actually take care of horses, cows, pigs, goats, sheep, whatever the animal, uh, what type of hay do you use? Is it large square bales? Is it small square bales? Is it round bales? And why? I would be happy to know that answer. As for those that don't have those operations, but just enjoy watching stuff like this, my question to you is which do you prefer from seeing on the camera? The large square bales, the round bales, or the small square bales? Which do you think is pretty fascinating and interesting? And which would you like to know more about? Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.